Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Hey, welcome back everyone to Big Data Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We're excited to continue the Big Data tradition from Big Data NYC to Big Data SV. <coughs> Hashtag Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net slash Big Data SV. Be part of the conversation with our new preview of our CrowdChat application. And we have a full on the record transcript there for any kind of questions or commentary. We're posting videos there. We're opening that up to everyone. Um, my next guest is Alan Salzdes, who's a VP of Marketing at Cloudera. Welcome back to theCUBE, and, and uh, thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for um, having us. Cloudera, the leader in the space, you guys, I mean, the history for us with theCUBE started at Cloudera, so we're proud to always have you guys on. Um, but what a difference the market is now. It's maturing uh, significantly. Um, what's the latest? messaging, what's the latest Cloudera focus? Share with the folks the update on Cloudera, the positioning. You guys have uh, the Enterprise Hub, which was announced. Impala set the standard for SQL over Hadoop. You're filling in the platform, the market's growing. We're hearing budgets, <laughs> budgets, budgets are out there now here at the show being talked about. What's the latest, what's the positioning of Cloudera? Yeah, so we, uh, we just launched last week, uh, officially the Enterprise Data Hub, which is our uh, the way we're describing our solution now. You know, I think we've spent, you know, I've been at Cloudera two years, and you're right, it's dramatically different. You know, two years ago, and even one year ago, uh, most of the talk was about uh, the Hadoop distribution, and what was in your distribution, and what was out of it, uh, who's more open source, you know, all those kinds of issues, and frankly, I think we just concluded most customers who actually want to solve business problems don't care about that stuff. Um, and they found the complexity of Hadoop pretty overwhelming. So uh, at the same time, we've invested a tremendous amount of, uh, of money and time and engineering in a lot of uh, proprietary software around the open source core to make uh, this thing that people want more deployable and more secure and more governable. Uh, and at the end of the day, we decided we need to simplify our own product packaging uh, and simplify the positioning. And so we settled on uh, describing the Enterprise Data Hub not as a Cloudera thing, but really as the thing that all of us, I think all of the vendors are really trying to get to, which is a, a new way to store, process, and analyze unlimited amounts of data in new and novel ways. So that's really what we're talking about. I always said when we started, uh, and this, all this the BS around, oh, this, because uh, you guys were the only ones, Cloudera was the only one in the market, then Horton yep. just came out yep. of Yahoo, yep. and Mark Mapar came up with their yep. approach. I always said from day one, there's plenty of beachhead for everybody, you yep. know, and that the rising tide is floats all boats. The market growth right now is so massive. You're seeing great valuations in the market on the private side. You're seeing companies go public, certainly. We're in a growth market. Um, talk about that positioning now. As the market matures, when you talk to customers, I don't see them having those same conversations. I do agree with you, but when they, you go in and say, this is the new Cloudera, it's not a change for Cloudera. No. You're yeah. just simplifying the messaging. Yeah, What's the messaging the and, the, and, the, and the pricing and positioning of our, of our solution, right? So, you know, there's, there's different segments of customers. Uh, I, think, I don't think anyone would argue too much about it. You know, there's the, the customers who are completely self-supporting, largely here in the Valley, who, you know, they're, they're helping to develop Hadoop. They don't really, Need drop it off. Today. I'll take care of the rest. Yeah, right. So there's there, and they will probably exist forever. Um, you know the Facebooks of the world and whatever. Uh, then there's a bunch of uh, customers who want support, but they don't yet either because they're not mature enough in their implementation or the problem they're trying to solve doesn't require it yet. But they don't care about things like SQL on Hadoop or they don't care about using search or they just want basically uh, a very inexpensive place to store lots of data. But they want some support. So that's kind of one group. Then uh, the next group we feel like is the, those who want to build a, uh, a cluster to solve one specific problem, maybe like a NoSQL kind of implementation. Uh, and then the last group are the you know, maybe larger companies who really get the idea, the power of Hadoop, uh, and the concepts like bring your workloads to the data, multi-structured data, um, and they want, to, they want to build what we are now calling an enterprise data hub. So we've really set our product offering up in those three things, and we've renamed it, so we have now have uh, Cloudera Enterprises remains the same name, but then we have three editions. The basic edition, which is really, you could think of it as almost like a supported Hadoop cluster, with no, no bells and whistles, uh, 
And you know, there are other vendors who provide, obviously, Hadoop distributions, and we will compete uh, aggressively with them for that segment. Then there's the special purpose uh, cluster, which we're calling Cloudera Enterprise Flex Edition. And you get to pick one of several kind of special uh, pieces of the framework, whether it's Impala or HBase or Search or Navigator, uh, but only one per cluster. Uh, and that's kind of the middle offering. And then the flagship offering is Cloudera Enterprise Data Hub Edition, where for one price you get all the software that Cloudera provides. And that's really what we, it's got tremendous traction. We really just began talking about it informally last quarter, kind of the end of last quarter. Uh, and it's been, it's proved incredibly popular, not only financially, but people get it. You have a very different conversation. Uh, you, you really don't get into the details of Hadoop, frankly. You have a completely different conversation with a different type of person, and they're trying to solve business problems, yeah, and I mean, that's really what we're doing. It's, it's so if I could just follow up on the packaging. So so the component, so you got the you know, the distro, which I think you call Cloud CDH. Express now. Right? The, the distro by itself, we still call CDH. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's just naked. You can still download that for free. And, yep, you know, right, do and then you got a management console, yep. right? And then you've yep. got other components in there. You mentioned Spark, you mentioned, you mentioned Search. I, I presume Impala, HBase, is, HBase is part of that. Yeah, all, all the, it is still somewhat Impala, confusing. Right. So all of the software is included in the distribution. So, yeah. so if, that's you, don't, all in if there, you don't right. care about support, you can still go download CDH and get all the software. Now, uh, if you want support. So that's the, now you're into Flex. Right? Uh, basic, Flex, and Data Hub okay, so, so So basic, you get support for basic. Yes. Basic, you get support for the core Hadoop framework, okay. but not for Spark. Impala. None of the components in Enterprise not Flex. The, not the kind of special components. I can pick, I, I can pick one component. For flex and then an enterprise yeah. uh, and data you, hub, I get, you get support everything. for all. Yep, that's right. Okay, and then the that's pricing right. goes up as obviously. I go yeah, but it's uh, you know we've kind of set the pricing so that it's uh, a lot cheaper compared to the old model where you really had to, it was really a la carte and you really had to kind of pick. Uh, okay, I want to add search. Okay, now I want to add Impala. Now I want to add HBase. Now I want to add this. And each time you had to uh, pay more. And you know we just found a it was confusing for our customers and frankly. Transaction so must be complicated, you know, right? I, and, and, and you know, we, you know, the the real strength of Cloudera is we do have all of these things available, and uh, we think the customers benefit by using more of them together. The power of Hadoop isn't just storing a bunch of data; it's doing SQL on Hadoop, search on on the same data, SQL on some of it, search on some of it, combining those in novel ways, introducing Spark now. Uh, so if, you, if, you're, if you're having to make a financial decision about whether it's worth it or not to try to use Impala, for example, you're, you, it's, an, it's an unnecessary obstacle. And we, you know, we just want people to use these uh, frameworks together on the same data and get in the habit of bringing workloads to the data, not moving their data around. So Enterprise Data Hub is less expensive than if I were to buy all the piece yes, parts. Exactly. Uh, but what you're saying is not everybody would necessarily buy all the piece parts, uh, but, but you're going to like, drive, you're like, drive usage it's up. It's like the Lexus. When the Lexus wrong, came yeah. out, you know, for those yes. who are old enough to remember that, yeah. uh, you know, one of the big things they came up with was, look, there's no options. You get everything. You just, you know, yeah. sunroof, there, right. FM radio, heated seats, whatever. You know, I, that's my simple analogy. Yeah, so the segment it's a segmentation pro yes. product map. Flagship yeah. is the enterprise hub. Yeah. Yeah. And those and if are you're really, not ready for that. Then, and some people yeah. are, and they just they don't want yeah. to get in the nuances of what did I buy, right. what support, it's all in. Yeah. Yeah. But and now then, you're, the conversation will, will switch to helping people actually exploit what's there that they yeah. may or may not be using. Yeah. And that's the yeah. power, right? I mean, once, you, once you're building an enterprise data hub, then, you're, then you can do the things that are really the exciting part, which is, wow, can I offload workloads and data out of my existing infrastructure, you know, whether it's a data warehouse or a mainframe or any number of other things into this enterprise data hub. And because I have a license now to use all these different workloads and different frameworks, I don't have to make any yeah, additions. I mean, I mean, Dave, we were talking about yesterday, is it makes it makes the conversation shift to, you know, pricing, tactical pricing, product decisions, positioning, usage to outcomes, yeah. right? So you have liturgy conversations, okay, you fit into this bucket, yeah. you're an enterprise hub customer, or hey, you're doing a POC or whatever your unique environment is, you can pick Flex, mm -hmm. or if you want to just do some ingest on HBase and use some basic stuff, you go with the basic, right? Yeah. And then, then you can move your efforts on those kinds of conversations. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it just helps us have a clearer conversation and you know, there are just customers who aren't there yet. You know, as, as we all know, this is still early market, there's still a lot of people learning about the Hadoop and what is possible and how to integrate it. And uh, you know, some of them want to get started. They want support, 
but they're just not there yet. They're not, you know, they're not uh, mature enough, but they will. It's changing. We, we heard from uh, Hortonworks yesterday with Microsoft on them. We were seeing the SQL uh, HD Insights. They p were, were pitching that and talking about that. And we just had another startup on Infinity DB and some other ones. Mm -hmm. The SQL market just seems ready to explode. Obviously, yeah. Impala was there first. Mm -hmm. You had kind of this idea. You got search, all these multifunctions built in. Now you kind of extract away that complexity and call it Enterprise Hub. But this SQL movement is happening, right? Yeah. I mean, some pretenders that are dropping out of the race. Mm -hmm. You're seeing some startups that kind of aren't making it. And mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the winners are emerging. Uh, so you guys are one of them. Uh, talk about how you guys are looking at that market. Is this because education's involved? You have a pre-existing massive market yeah. that wants, hey, I got old stuff. I right. got to get it into the new hub. Right. Um, right. How do you talk to those folks? What are some of the trends? Do you agree it's about the breakout? Do you feel yeah. it? Oh, yeah. No, so, so Impala is the open source project that we developed. Uh, and it is, you know, I think in A, you have to start distinguishing between uh, SQL and Hadoop technology that's actually available and, and uh, you know, generally available and deployable versus SQL and Hadoop that is PowerPoint uh, slide or maybe vaporware. Yeah, vaporware. This is the tech industry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> After so, all, uh, <laughs> architecture. Right. Another so word. <laughs> that, that, you know, one, one, one big distinction right off the bat is uh, Impala is, has been GA for quite a while. It's widely deployed and uh, heavily used, uh, and it's integrated with some of our key partners like SaaS, uh, and you can actually do it. So that's that's probably the biggest differentiator. But I think the the important thing that it did was it opened people's eyes to, wow, this Hadoop thing isn't just a storage and MapReduce, you know, massive data processing thing. It is a potential, uh, you know, uh, disruptor of you know, uh, the data warehouse, for example, enterprise data warehouse, because it's, you know, an order of magnitude or two less expensive. It often can outperform, uh, depending on the dependent demo workload. Uh, it's more flexible because you can combine structured and unstructured data in ways that you just can't do in an enterprise data warehouse. Uh, now, you know, we, all of our customers who are uh, using an enterprise data hub as a way to offload an EDW, are not getting rid of their EDW. So that's one thing we really want to make clear. We are not, as it's sometimes portrayed, uh, saying to our customers, hey, throw that thing away, put this thing in. That's not it at all. The point is, you have, you know, if you're a large bank or a large credit card company or a large whoever, any, any large company has one or many enterprise data warehouses, which cost a lot of money. They're under continual pressure to expand and have multi-million dollar expansions. And often you can say, Instead of taking $10 million or $20 million or $100 million and increasing the size of your existing EDW, you can look at that objectively and say, well, there's a lot of data and workloads in this EDW that we could move very effectively into an enterprise data hub. And that will not only save us a ton of money, it will free up our EDW to do what it's best at, you know, run our core critical, mission critical, you know, financial an analysis or, or whatever. And we can grow the massive amount of the big data in this enterprise data hub at a fraction of the cost and do all the flexible analysis. So you're still going to have a big EDW. Uh, our largest customers have massive enterprise data warehouse in implementations that are not going anywhere. Uh, but they're building this EDH next to it, and it's growing. The amount of data in it is growing much faster. But I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I agree yeah. with what you're saying. Um, but the reality, and it's the same thing with mainframes, and people, you know, when we saw that big movement, yep. didn't throw them out, you know. Yeah, they're still, still there, by the way. They're still there, <laughs> and it's good business for IBM. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, which business would you rather be in? Yeah. Uh, so when Mike was up on stage last year at this event at Strata, and you guys announced Enterprise Data Hub, he said that Hadoop is moving from the periphery to the center of the data center's, you know, yeah. architecture, yeah. And, and that's happening. Yeah. And so you just pointed out, Alan, is that essentially you can cut your cost Quite dramatically. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, a, it's you know. at least one, if not two orders of magnitude. I mean, right. You're talking a, a tenth, a twentieth, a thirtieth, a fiftieth. Ten x plus better yeah. price performance. Yeah. And so, if you're a CIO, where are you going to put your investment in your portfolio? Yeah, you're going to put it into this 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 new world. So, while I agree with you that enterprise, you know, data warehouse not going to go away. Right. It's going to shrink. It's going. You're going to be selective about yeah. what you. You're going to be much there. more selective. And and, and, yeah. and the other thing I would point out, and, and I would like your comment on this. What you guys are promising, and maybe even delivering, I think are delivering, you guys being the Hadoop community, mm -hmm. you're delivering on the promises that the EDW guys That's never exactly delivered right. on. That's right. And that is, I think, very powerful and is what is bringing a lot of momentum to the yeah. business. Yeah, and I think people are getting, yeah, that, that's exactly right. In fact, we tell customers that, you know, if, you, if our customers are old enough, 
uh, like I am, uh, you can, uh, you know, it's, it's essentially, it's a very similar story. You know, take all your data from these different sources, put it in one place, mix it up, do the reporting. And that's true, enterprise data warehouses did that to a degree, but only for certain types of data and only with a lot of uh, money and very careful planning and schema design and all of that stuff, which Hadoop frees you from a lot of that. Uh, but once you do that schema design, you're locked in. Yeah, it's and very then difficult. It's to hard change. to be agile. Yeah, it's very hard to be agile. Hard to add a new field or a new column or whatever. Uh, you know, and Hadoop today is radically different than it was two years ago. So two years ago, there's a lot of skepticism. Even even in the lot, even in 2013, there's still a lot of skepticism from enterprise data warehouse buyers uh, and mainframe buyers. You know, well, can you really do this? And you don't have all the features, and you don't have all this and that. And, you know, speaking for Cloudera, we have added a ton of features that now bring it up to the point where, you know, we use the, we use the, uh, the uh, smartphone as a metaphor a lot. Uh, I don't know if we've yeah. talked to you about that, but basically... Amar was on New York. Yeah, talk about Tom, Amar talks about this a lot. <laughs> but, you know, you, there, everyone, including me, still has a DSLR camera. I have it in my closet at home. Uh, we probably use that thing now, you know, two or three times a year. You're going to a soccer tournament. Yeah, you're going my to wife will bring it. You're going to bring it. <laughs> but day in, day out, you take most of your photos, I'm guessing, with your smartphone. Uh, now, if you compare the smartphone to your DSLR as a camera, the DSLR is a way better camera, right, in every dimension, pretty much. Uh, however, you still use the smartphone most of the time because it's convenient. You have it with you. You can. It's integrated with all the other apps on your phone, you know, Facebook and Twitter and whatever, uh, in a way that a DSLR camera is not. And that's a very similar story to... Uh, enterprise data hub as compared to an EDW. If you just compare them, uh, an EDH to an EDW, you know, uh, side by side, you might conclude, and you probably would, that EDW has a richer set of features, it's more robust, it's been around a long time, uh, it's, it's a better data warehouse in many ways. However, if you think of what an EDH could also do that EDW can't do, right, it's an active archive, it gives you self-service BI, it's much more flexible, right, you can store anything, you can keep it forever. It's a lot cheaper. Mm. You know, a lot of companies figure, they start thinking more carefully, like you said, they're more selective, like, okay, wait a minute, I'm gonna use my data warehouse for this stuff, but you know, there's a lot of stuff I could do, maybe not quite as snazzily, uh, but a hell of a lot cheaper and more flexibly. So that's, we see yeah, that happening. And what else can I do with that new right. stuff? And this, right. this did lead to an interesting discussion with, with Amr, we were at uh, uh, splunks.conf, and, and I was using the Oracle example. I know Oracle's a big partner, you yep. guys, and yep. you're obviously very careful about you know, how you position there, but we heard Larry Ellison, John, last year at Oracle Open World talk about, oh, Hadoop, it's a filtering system, it's batch, and what you want to mm -hmm. do is do all your filtering and then bring it into Exadata. Uh -huh. and, you know, we, mm -hmm. you know that's, that's tongue in cheek. We, we look at that and we talk to CIOs and say, okay, that's, there are use cases for that, but there's many more opportunities, as we're just describing, for mm -hmm. this. This, this new wave, and you know, that's, we see where all the growth is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so or exciting. Oracle's a great partner. I think they have the most um, mature uh, view of going to market with Hadoop. So as you, as you know, the big data appliance is Cloudera software inside of Oracle hardware. Right. Um, and they sell it right alongside Exadata and all of their other database products. Uh, and they view it as very complimentary. Uh, and they're basically telling a very similar story to us. Uh, and they have such a diverse product line that it fits well into their sales motion and their marketing, and they're doing a great job with it, um, and are you know a very very good partner of ours. You know, if if, if there's a company that is uh, you know only has an enterprise data warehouse, then it's a tougher thing because obviously there is this overlap. I think everyone acknowledges there's an overlap. You can debate about how wide the gray area is and where the edges are. Um, but that's where it gets a little more sensitive. Alan, mm -hmm. talk about, um, you know, obviously, I mean, I can see where you're coming from saying, oh, we don't want to rip and replace. I mean, it's a nice uh, way to align with the current environment. Mm -hmm. The reality, I agree with Dave, is, is that, and what you're saying is that it'll shift. Um, so that's going to happen. We like that trend. I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty well documented. As Cloudera comes in this early market, you guys have a good lead, great positioning, nice clean pricing and, and mm -hmm. product positioning. When you go in with your professional services, which you've been doing for quite some time mm -hmm. with a lot of different accounts, yep. Yep. some you can't name because of the confidentiality, yep. large environments, yep. you're moving into now the mainstream where the deployments are getting bigger and bigger. What do you go when you go into the enterprise guys? They're like That's a mid-range enterprise, not the high-end hyperscale, mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. mid-range. Mm -hmm. 
what do you talk to the CIOs about? And, 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 and how do you talk about, hey, we're not just a little startup anymore. You know, we're having big you know, sales yeah. organizations. You have professional services. Mm -hmm. How do you earn that trust? And what's the messaging for you guys? Because they, they're looking at you going, hmm, we, we want this. Yeah. We want this new, new direction. Yep. And we yep. want a reliable partner. Yep. Yep. Well, we, we really, as of the end of last quarter, we really start with the enterprise data. That, that really literally now is where we start. We don't start with Hadoop and all that stuff. Um, and we really talk about trying to help them solve their business problems. So, you know, step one, uh, in my opinion, is listen to the customer. You know, wh what, are you, what are you trying to do? What's your, you know, uh, there, there's many, many use cases, right? They're all over the map. I'd say a very common path is uh, 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 starting, a lot of companies start with an IT problem. You know, even though in the long run, the IT problem is not really the, uh, the power that's possible to leverage with Hadoop, but it's often the place where you start. It's, it sometimes is just, I just want a cheaper, more scalable place to store my data. I don't want to keep buying storage from pick your favorite SAN or NAS EMC. vendor. The container. Uh, I don't <laughs> That's want to, how Barker calls that's it. Right. I don't want to pay millions of dollars for the container. Exactly. I want a cheaper place because I, I don't know. I want to keep all this data, but I'm not totally sure why yet. I, I just want to keep it because I want to explore it. I want to analyze it, but I don't really, I can't really quantify yet why. It's an option it. option kind of pricing. Yeah, model. exactly. I want to I have preserve the option for some insight later. Uh, so that's very common. So we start with that, and that might be a storage displacement. It might just be an incremental bunch of data you never kept before, but now you want to keep. Um, and then I'd say the next step is offloading some existing infrastructure. Uh, you know, we have a great partnership with SyncSort, for example, uh, and they're all about helping uh, their customers and our, our joint customers offload mainframes. And there's a, just a direct ROI savings there. Like, you know, figure out what's in your mainframe. It's been in there for decades. Data, tables, transformations. And guess what? You could do all that stuff, not all of it, but, you know, a bunch of it in Hadoop just as easily and immediately pay your mainframe vendor less money every month, every quarter. Right? So that's an that's a immediate ROI. And then uh, after that kind of offload uh, angle, um, then the next thing they usually get to is the more advanced analytics stuff, the 360 customer view, you know, looking across their business lines, uh, customers who buy things from different subsidiaries or over a long period of time, or you know, how can they market better, how can they serve the right ad up, you know, all, all those kinds of things. But it's often a progression that starts with a simple, discrete, IT problem. That's very common. So let's. I want to take your mainframe example and, yeah. and talk about that because there's, there's there's gold in them now. Our mainframes. Yes. It's been sitting there. Surprising for, how many of them there are for, for decades. And there are a lot of them. Yeah. And in fact, in certain countries, in, in regions of the world, it's actually growing. I mean, IBM yeah. has a, actually yeah. a good mainframe business in China and Africa. But so, and we do a number of uh, events uh, at IBM events, and their messaging is is really good. It is. You know, it's great. They, Smarter they've, Planet. They've, and, and again, Smarter Planet. They got yeah. big services yeah. and. Yeah. And you know we can get that data out. So, so my specific question to you is: How do you compete, you know, with that that large whale, that sort yes. of IBM messaging, the huge services capabilities? Yeah. Um, They've been around know, for a little while too. Been around for a long time. They know what they're doing. They, they got sold their, their server division. <laughs> they, yeah, they got yeah, geared up. They geared up the services. Yeah. So, so how does Cloudera compete? Yeah. Where do you win? Where do you struggle? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously, we're not going to compete with the IBM brand anytime soon. Right. You know, we. Uh, we're trying to do our best, but eat some uh, breakfast first before you get to lunch. <laughs> yeah, right. no. Yeah. Uh, no, but seriously, you know, I think um, you know IBM tells a very good story, uh, and they have they have a product in every category, uh, in BI and analytics and data movement and integration and storage, obviously. Uh, and I think the story we really tell is: look, despite the marketing veneer and the great story they tell about um, uh, the Smarter Planet and Big Insights and, and all of their products. The fact is, when you really want to deploy and solve the soup to nuts problem, you're really buying a series of discrete products, all, albeit all from IBM, maybe. That's what they'd like you to do. Uh, but you still have the problem of data being stored and processed in different systems. And so the story we're telling is, that's really not the right approach for the modern enterprise. What you want to do is build an enterprise data hub where you put all of your data uh, in one system, and then you bring workloads to that system as needed. So you, if you have a bunch of data, you have you know, 500 terabytes or a petabyte of data, and uh, you want to do some SQL-like queries on that data, or I mean the SQL queries, then you know, use Impala. If you want to do some exploratory searching, just to, let's say you got 
you know, millions of patent filings in the, in, in the data hub. Well, lots of attorneys really don't know SQL. They might want to just Google it and use uh, uh, Cloudera Search. Uh, if you need to do stream processing, you know, bring Spark to bear. If you need, you know, so that's the thing that you can't do that even IBM can't do. They don't have an integrated data hub that's all one system. It's actually a series of systems. So that message that's resonates a, with the CTO who yeah, sort of sees that yeah. as the as Now the we have to and, overcome, and it, you know, and, it, and it doesn't when IBM and runs you in the board. And, well, know, yeah, I mean, you know, we have to overcome <laughs> all of the the inertia, the brand, they have a very yeah. strong brand, they have decades of relationships. You guys are they picking have, your shots. You guys are picking your yeah, market. Yeah, we, we, not we like were not, I don't think we're unrealistic, but that's the story yeah, but that we're plenty telling. Of but you're not shotgunning it, trying to just throw right. it against the wall. You're pretty targeted in your position. And not everyone's going to go for it, but there's a surprising appetite for there's a lot of excitement about, uh, you know, when you're in a tech space like this that's being disrupted right now, and there's a real sea change, uh, people get very excited once they get it. You know, once they understand, like, oh, okay. You know, it takes them a while, usually, but once they get the idea that, wow, you, so you're saying I can put any data in here, you know, pictures, uh, relational data, tables, stream, click streams, logs, I can put all that stuff in here, and then I can analyze it with different tools without having to move it anywhere. Once that light bulb goes off, then they're very receptive. That don't because have that, to move it pieces. They're not moving it is critical, that, right? and it takes them a while to really see that. And you can see it in their eyes all of a sudden, you know. And th then they get very interested. And despite the fact we are, you know, we're 520 people or so, so that's, we think that's a lot. But I know that compared to IBM's. Uh, however many hundred thousand people they have. It's not a lot, it's but. Not bigger than when you started. I mean, it's, I mean, I, you know, we've been drinking the Kool-Aid from the beginning, as you yeah. know, and I, we agree with you. Once people taste it and they see it, yeah. it's pretty obvious. Everything yeah. else is just a distraction. Um, so I wanted, I wanted, you mentioned something on the opening. We talked about, you know, you, the old Hadoop conversations. Talk about the new positioning about the enterprise hub. Mm -hmm. um, I got I to gotta talk about the Cloudera evolution, the mm -hmm. story, because you know you have to tell the narrative of Cloudera. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Mike Olson uh, step down as CEO. He's now yep. chairman of the board right. and chief strategy officer. Yep. Co-founder Amr Awadal, as CTO. Yep. Um, the Cloudera magic from the early days, mm -hmm. um, and it's no longer about Hadoop, now it's a bigger picture, um, is growing up. Yep. Um, and so, what is the new magic? Because Cloudera had the magic early days about that unique, it's a startup, you first mover, great people, mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. team, and as you guys continue to evolve, you have a new CEO, talk about the new magic. What do you guys, how do you talk about the new company? Because you're growing up, you're having you know growth, massive growth opportunity, great traction, What's the next chapter look like? How do you tell that story about Cloudera? Well, I think we're, we are very focused. So Tom Riley is our CEO. Uh, he joined us last summer. And I think he's been on board about eight months. Um, and you know, Mike is still extremely actively involved as our chief strategy officer. Um, you know, I think it's freed him up to do what he does best, which is work on the technology, the technical direction of the company with Amr. Um, and you know, Tom uh, has really helped the company focus. Uh, you know, still. I, you know, Hadoop is obviously central to our existence, right? So we still have massive investment in the Hadoop uh, open source community, and uh, so I don't want to imply that we're leaving that behind at all. It's just that in our in our marketing and positioning and selling to business buyers, yeah. it's under the hood. Yeah, they're trying to solve a problem, a business problem. Uh, we're really committed to making them successful. So you know, that, that I'd say that is really the focus. We are, of course, committed to building great software and ensuring that it's governed and secure and managed and open and all of those things. But at the end of the day, you know, a customer who's trying to uh, figure out how their merchant system got hacked and they lost control of, you know, tens of millions of credit card numbers doesn't really care, you know, which version of Flume we're using, you know, maybe. They, they, they want to, they got a multi-million, maybe multi-billion dollar problem. Uh, that's the problem. So that, I think that's what we're really focused on is helping our customers solve business problems using data. Uh, and, uh, Share with the folks the culture of Cloudera. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you because I, I was there early on, sitting in the office with the early guys. And but you've grown. A lot of things change when you grow, mm -hmm. but yep. culture doesn't change. Talk about the current culture. What are you? What is the culture now at Cloudera? Is it more the same? Is it extending? Is it growing? Is it <coughs> new, new? You have new leadership. Obviously, the founders are still around, which is always a good sign, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we have a. You know, Cloudera has an extremely strong technical foundation. So I think you know, number one. Uh, the engineers that we have, I think, are, uh, we would argue, unparalleled in the world of Hadoop. Um, and they are, uh, you know, we, we still invest about half our engineering 
uh, effort in the open source part of our business and half in the proprietary, you know, rough numbers. Um, and so I'd say, you know, technology and making sure that we stay ahead on, uh, on the technical front is probably paramount. Uh, I think what we've added in the last um, year, really, is we really beefed up our professional services, our technical support, um, and our, our uh, focus on making sure that customers are happy. You know, it's not enough as, a, you know, Silicon Valley is littered with tens of thousands of startups that had great technology that failed. You know, we all know having great technology is, you know, maybe necessary but not sufficient. Guess what? You have to be nice to customers. You have to solve their problems. You have to answer the phone when they call. You have to fly out to, you know, wherever and, and, and fix issues when something goes wrong. Um, you have to maintain the relationships. So all of those things. And we've massively increased our sales force. So our, our field sales force has grown dramatically in the last 12 months. Um, so all of those, I'd say we're, you know, we're, we're really building the business culture on top of the extremely strong technical foundation. So that's, I'd say that's kind of where we're Well, we're, we're really pleased to see the success. We see, the, for everybody in this space, it's great valuation on everyone's companies, great growth opportunities, and obviously it wasn't for uh, Amr and Mike and the team at Cloudera, the Cube wouldn't have existed. We, we started in the Cloudera office on uh, next to Fry's back yeah. in the, the glory days. So, uh, you know, props to Cloudera. Great to see your success. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate and sharing the Cloudera uh, mission, the new positioning, the Enterprise Hub. Great positioning, great stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Right, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Thank okay, you. Okay, we're here at the Cube. We write back live from Silicon Valley. Big Data SV covering all the action in Big Data, all the innovation in Silicon Valley with Cloudera here inside the Cube. Strata conference going on right behind us. We write back with our news break right after this short break. <laughs>